Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Friday, December 15th. Jaguars versus Ravens, Sunday night football, just a couple sleeps away. It's going to be a teal out. It's going to be prime time. It's going to be a raucous environment. I'm fired up to get into it. If you're out and about town this weekend, if you're going to the game on Sunday, wear your teal. It is a teal out. It's going to be awesome. So getting into matchups to watch, though, my biggest thing I'm intrigued about here is Kyle Hamilton, the safety for the Baltimore Ravens, MCL sprain. It's one thing for a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence to play through an MCL sprain, but a safety is an entirely different thing. He's been practicing limited this week. Um, This is one of the very best safeties in football, regardless of age. Like he is awesome. If he plays and he's himself, he's going to give the Jaguars hell. He's going to make it very difficult to operate down to down. If he plays and he's not quite himself, can the Jaguars take advantage? If he doesn't play, you should be able to take advantage because your backup, I think, is Daryl Worley at that point. Evan Ingram is the Jaguars' leading receiver. If Kyle Hamilton is good to go, how does that matchup play out? I think it can be you know, pretty difficult if you're talking about Evan Ingram trying to match up with Kyle Hamilton every single down, every time you're passing the football. So we'll see if Kyle Hamilton can play. If he can't, I think that's advantage Jaguars. Uh, If he plays and he's not really himself, I think that's advantage Jaguars. But if he can play and be close to what he normally is, that's going to be a tough matchup for the Jags. Jadavion Clowney versus the Jaguars tackles. Clowney has been playing both sides of the line this year. The Jaguars had the opportunity to sign him this offseason. He was in the building for the Jaguars. They did not sign him. He went to Baltimore. He signed a one-year, $2.5 million deal. Okay. You're telling me that you don't want to pay to Davion Clowney more than $2.5 million, that you couldn't offer a better deal. Okay. You better hope he doesn't terrorize your quarterback because that's what he's been doing this year. That is what he's been doing. He is having one of the best years of his career as a pass rusher, as a disruptor um, for Baltimore. You know, I think this is a guy the Jaguars could have absolutely used. You know, they have a one-man show at pass rush right now. It's named Josh Allen. You're telling me you couldn't use Jadavion Clowney? Okay. You know, Michael Pierce, Justin Matabuike, Travis Jones, these interior players for the Ravens, they are a terror on the interior as well. I would not be surprised if they eat up Luke Fortner and Ezra Cleveland all game. You know, Ezra Cleveland, I have a lot of respect for him. He's been thrust into, you know, trying to start at left tackle, trying to start at left guard, dealing with injury. There's a lot going on. He's trying to get back for this week. Obviously, Walker Little's trying to get back as well at tackle. But look, if the Jaguars keep trying to run the ball up the gut, these guys are going to feast on it. Absolutely. Uh, It does not work, especially against a defensive front like this. If you want to sprinkle it in to keep them honest, I think, sure, you need to probably. But good Lord, let Travis Etienne get outside the tackles. Let Travis Etienne get the ball in space a lot more, a lot earlier on in the game. I just, I don't. I don't understand it. I don't understand why you're running the ball up the gut on first and 10 when it's either a loss or a no gain almost every single time. Makes no sense to me. And these guys, they're going to eat it up. I do believe that if you try to do it. Because Luke Fortner really struggles, quite frankly, to create any push in the running game. It's unfortunate. Now, looking at the Jags receivers a little bit, Calvin Ridley and Cal- versus Calvin Ridley, right? Zay Jones versus Zay Jones. These guys have got to come into this game ready to make big plays for Trevor Lawrence in this offense. They need them to ball out. They need them to be the players that you have seen them be at times this year, at times throughout their career. They were not that last week. They were they were really bad last week for the most part. And I know that Calvin Ridley did make some plays. Uh, Zay Jones made plenty of plays against the Bengals the week before. You need both of these guys to come to play in a big way. Um, because they are your one and two right now at receiver. Bottom line, there's no Christian Kirk walking through that door. Yeah, you have Parker Washington, obviously Evan Ingram at tight end, but these guys need to be able to make big plays for this offense, and they did not make a lot of big plays last week. Bottom line, they've got to be able to do it. Um, Doug Peterson and Press Taylor versus Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald, one of the best defensive coordinators in the game. They switch up a lot of what they do consistently. They have a very uh, diverse set of coverages. They do run a lot of man coverage as well. They switch up their fronts. They're impressive. The Jaguars are going to have to try to throw the kitchen sink at them, in my opinion. They have been way too predictable on offense way too often this year. Uh, They need to attack the middle of the field more, which they just don't do in the passing game. They need to get ETN outside the tackles and in space more. 
They need to employ motion, play action, misdirection, bunch formations. Because when they do not, it's static and it's oftentimes ugly. You've got to be able to be more creative on the offensive side of the ball consistently. Okay? And obviously, you've got to be able to eliminate the pre-snap penalties and the mistakes and all that. But I think that if you can just do some of this stuff I'm talking about, you're going to give yourself more of an advantage or more of a puncher's chance in this football game. Uh, Trevor Lawrence versus the Ravens secondary will be huge, obviously. Ball placement, timing, getting the ball out, decision-making. I think you could question some of those things. Last week with Trevor Lawrence was not his best game, but wasn't awful by any stretch in my opinion. The interception's ugly, but obviously Calvin Ridley has to get his head around um, on the first interception or second interception. Uh, You have a little bit of a misunderstanding about where the ball should be placed with the Zay Jones deep shot and with the Calvin Ridley deep shot as well later on. So I think, you know, ball placement, timing, decision-making, communication, understanding where your receivers are going to be and what they're expecting. I think Trevor Lawrence needs to have himself a big day. Um, I would also say Mike Caldwell versus Todd Munkin, but I really don't know that that's a fair fight right now because the Jaguars' defense has, has been playing abysmal the last two weeks. You know, you've got Lamar Jackson coming in here, OBJ, Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, Keaton Mitchell running all over the place out of the backfield. If Mike Caldwell's defense plays the way they have the last two weeks and they're not ready for play action and misdirection and all these things, they're going to they're gonna have a, a sickening day on defense. So I think that you've got to have a, a bounce-back performance from the Jaguars' defense. And that doesn't mean they need to you know hold the Ravens to under 20 points or anything like that, but it does mean they just have to play better. You can't have these coverage busts that you've had. Mike Caldwell needs to get his guys right. Bottom line, and the guys need to go out and perform. Obviously, he can teach them all day, but if they don't pay attention to what's going on, that's on them. But Mike Caldwell, his players, you know, specifically linebacker, secondary, you've seen some busts in that regard. Um, they've got to get it get it right this week. And again, that's not playing perfect football. That's just don't have coverage busts. Three coverage busts where receivers are wide open. You can't have it. You cannot have it. They will eat you alive. But final point is special teams. They've got to perform at a high level. We don't talk about special teams every week because usually the Jaguars' special teams is pretty damn good. They need to have a good week this week so the Jaguars can have a chance to pull off an upset against a team that's playing good football, against a team that's in first place in the AFC and overall tied for the best record in the NFL. The Jaguars, it's not a must-win game, but it is a must-play-better game. They cannot play the way they've been playing the last two weeks and then have confidence going into the final three games of the season. So Jaguars, you want to see them play a lot better on Sunday night football than they did on Monday night football. We'll see how it goes. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.